I thought I will speak on the topic called the fathers and guardians. Uh, who's looking after this? Okay, uh, fathers and guardians, a very important topic for us. I know Stanley spoke on sons and nephews. Some of you came back to me and uh, confessed uh, your ne nephew behavior. Some of you confessed. Some of you confirmed your son's behavior. And uh, I think some of you decided to move on from being nephews to sons, which is very good. But also I thought it is good for us to look at fathers and guardians as a topic because unless you understand uh, this concept well, we will not be able to move forward. Are you excited? Okay. So can you shake hands with your neighbor and say that uh, I am a son? Can you say that? And ask him what do you feel? Yeah? Okay. So I've got two videos. I'm going to pray for you two videos. Uh, one of them is very famous, but I thought I must play it. And one is a video which is taken out from uh, uh, some of our training schools that we do in the Naval Academy. Uh, often in the, in the Naval Academy when we join or when we join the National Defense Academy, we are given guardians. And the job of the guardian is to make your life as miserable as possible. Like I'm a batch from the 93rd NDA and... Uh, we are about 117 joined the Naval Academy. At the end of three years of training, uh, only 34 passed out. And today, maybe about six or seven are still remaining in the Navy. And, and remaining have decided to move on. Or maybe a little more is what uh, will remain in the Navy. And remaining have already decided to move on or likely to move on in the next few days. But we passed out about 34. But the guardians are the guys who test whether it's worth you being there. And we undergo very rig rigorous training in those three years. And many of them quit during the time of rigorous. This is one such training uh, where the guardians push us, test us to see what metal you're made. And most of us quit in this. Most of our batch left the Naval Academy undergoing this particular training. <laughs>
I want to ask you, you saw both the videos, who's the father, who's the guardian? Yeah? I hope you got the glimpse of who's a guardian. The guardians I've showed you, they're absolutely disengaged to what you go through. All they need is to push you. All they need is to break you. And they say, you survive. My job is to succumb to you. I had a colleague of mine and uh, he was weak in cross country and every Sunday we would have to run about 11 kilometers of cross country and a test of endurance in the academy and often he would he would be so scared of cross country he wouldn't sleep the previous night because he knew that is his area of weakness but he wanted to do it he wanted to push on and the guardians of the cross country would push us would insult us would constantly bring her to the verge of breakdown. And I remember the final cross country which determined whether he would stay or not. He decided to run the race. He decided to uh, run through the cross country. And he finished. But when he finished the finish line, he was dropped dead. And I lost a colleague on the cross country line because the guardian pushed him, pushed him, pushed him. And finally we had to send the dead body back. Uh, and every time in my three years of Naval Academy, every six months, I would have a cadet who has lost his life on the track of cross country. The guardians push, 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 and they go on. But there's a difference between who's a father and who's a guardian, okay? And God is not a guardian, he's a father. He's a father. And that's very important for us. Everything that Bible talks of, talks of the heart of God, and the heart of God is family. The heart of God is family. People ask me, why did God create man and woman if there is so much of chaos and confusion? One answer is this. God had a son. His name was Jesus. And he liked him so much. He wanted to have more such sons. And that's the church and daughters. Okay? He had a family and he wanted to extend his family. He wanted to enjoy the family. He wanted to have more and more and more. That's the joy of the heart of God. And God is interested in building families. My question is, who's the father? Who's the guardian? And Paul writes it for us very beautifully. And I'm going to help you to do it. How do you recognize the difference? Both the videos you saw, what is that one thing that made you say, this is a guardian and this is a father? Can anyone? Love. Okay. Anything else? Concern. Okay. The father runs the race. Okay. Father sees the pain of the son, okay? Assurance being there, okay? But I want to say that all your answers are right. But between both the videos, there is one video that touches here. 
करेक्ट नो दिल में कुछ होता है करेक्ट समथिंग हैपन्स व्हेन यू वॉच द सेकेंड वीडियो समथिंग हैपन्ड समथिंग इंपैक्टेड द फर्स्ट वीडियो समथिंग इंपैक्टेड यर बट द सेकेंड वीडियो समथिंग इंपैक्टेड यर द फर्स्ट वीडियो व्हेन यू वॉच ई सेड यार हाउ इज दिस गाय एंड यूर हिंग वाई इज दिस गाय एंड यूर बट यर यू जस्ट फेल्ट ही शुड एंड यूर because his father was standing next to him agreed fathers often speak from the heart and they communicate and paul makes some beautiful statements for us to look at fathers and guardians okay bible makes one beautiful assumption the assumption that god made in the bible is if the father is right in the house the house is right if the father is not right the house is not right okay who has to be right in the side father has to be right if the father is excited about church everybody is excited about church if the father is excited about worship everybody is excited in that house about what what drives the family as per god's assumption and god cannot be wrong is that the fathers have to play the role and therefore paul writes in 1 timothy i exalt and i command and i charge every man to lift up their holy hands and praise not women he says men have to take the lead men have to take the lead and i am constantly insisting this in the neon family church if man takes the lead it is the heart of god i know i am not anti feminist movement i am not against women coming up but the government of god is still a patriarchal government and god belie- believes that if the fathers right everything else is right homes collapse the s- responsibility is the garden of eden the sin that eve committed eve committed but the biggest responsibility that ever was put was put on the father of the garden that is adam he is responsible he is responsible for the way people tell me i have problems in 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 in, in loving god because i've got a family that is and i tell them who is the father you are the father take executive decisions because if you don't behave like a man with a backbone you will not survive as a father barge through barriers and say that i am a father and in this father the video is so he barge through the security using one one identity card that identity card i am a father and i take executive decisions hallelujah and paul says this to us and very beautifully he puts it in the verses and you need to recognize you need to recognize in your family it's your father God is as much as a spiritual father to us he also entrusted spiritual fathers to us on the earth because this is a family and in the family you need to have fathers okay this is what he says even if they if you had 10000 guardians in christ you do not have many fathers for in christ jesus i have become a father to you through the gospel what a powerful state is correct you have 10000 guardians there will be lot of people who will push you ha karo church acha hai karo worship acha hai karo job is good many guardians will come along your way but paul says there is a difference between people who advise you people who give you counsel and me i have become a spiritual father to all of you agreed you have 10000 guardians but i have become and he says the strings that attach me to be your father is only one he says the gospel and the gospel is nothing but christ jesus the whole of gospel is about christ jesus okay same verse i've translated in llt it says even if you had 10000 others to teach about christ you have only one spiritual father your father in christ jesus when i preach the gospel the good news to you and he says the good news has made me a father to you that's what paul writes to the church in corinthians he challenges them he steers them he excites them and he says you may have multiple sources youtube is a multiple sources of guardians for you every morning every morning you could get up and listen to a beautiful message okay there are million guardians that are available okay yes he is lot of videos but a father a spiritual father will always ask you what is the manna that you picked up early in the morning what is the reception that you had from the living god today did you listen to the voice of god that's more important 
that's more important because you need to receive the manna that comes and Paul says in Christ I become a spiritual father to you though you have a countless guides in Christ the other phrase used for fathers is guides you have counselors you have teachers you have got you know guardians but he says countless guides in Christ but you do not have many fathers you have countless guides but you don't have many fathers for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel I became a father to you he says I become a father to you okay remember Paul is writing to the church in Corinthians and if you read the epistles that he's written the church in Corinthians was in severe sin there was homosexuality there was wife swapping there was all democracy available it was almost on the verge and if you read the book of Corinthians it's Paul addressing each one of them in a very straightforward and he's writing very staunch letters and as he's writing the staunch letters he's correcting them he's course correcting them and here he says in the very first chapter or chapter 4 he says that you know you may have many guides who will tell you many things but as a father I want to tell you you are wrong that's what he tells them as a father I want to tell you you are wrong and he says I don't care what people tell you but as a father as a relationship that I have with you you are wrong that's what he says you know what we are living in a world when many people will come to you and scratch your back it's okay it's okay it's okay you know in the aviation field we've got a beautiful phrase in the briefing room pilots come fighter pilots before and we do a briefing for them and when we do the briefing for them before they leave they read this caption and the caption is beautiful the gap the gap between the pat on the back and the kick on the back is very small what does it say the gap between the pat on the back and every pilot reads it because in the cockpit he needs to know whether he's going to get a kick or he's going to get a pat when he finishes his assignment it's very small and only a father will know when you need and Paul is saying I become a father to you guides will always rub your back and they'll keep saying they're saying no problem MBA Kille, you can finish your course in the next 10 years no problem Bahot time hai. correct correspondence you can finish in seven years but a father will put a strict timeline and I want to tell you friends it's good because the world today fathers have become rare and the heart of God is always to our fathers and the world's sons have become rare and you heard Stanley's message on sons and nephews and you and you realized it's good for you to take a call you may have countless guides but I want to ask you, is there one man in your life who can look to you eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder and tell you, my dear son, you are wrong. You are off the course. You're not doing right. If you have one such man, these 10,000 guardians are not needed for you. One person who can look shoulder to shoulder, eye to eye and tell you are wrong because that has become a rarity today. And Paul happens to be that one in the Corinthian church who looked eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, and told them, I'm a father, and I will not tolerate nonsense. Agreed? Yes? You choose what you want, okay? The difference between the guardians and the fathers, okay? What is the difference between both? Here is the difference. Fathers lead and guardians propose. Guardians propose. When a... When a, when a person comes to a guardian, guardian will say, you can do this, 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 you can do this also. And the guy is confused, said, I came to you for a problem, but you're telling I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. All the options are there. But fathers don't give you do this, do this, do this, do this. They will say, follow me. I'm ahead of you. Hallelujah. Father says, I walked with God. I've enjoyed his presence. The road where you're standing, I walked it five years back. Come on, take the left and get on. Guardians will say, I am not very sure. 
you can try this you can try this you can try this you can try this you can try that multiple options are given to you at the end of it you are still stuck unable to decide which way to go and even if you decide you're not very sure whether your decision is right but fathers lead they lead they say follow me jesus said my sheep knows my voice my sheep knows my voice and he said the shepherd the father comes through the gate it's a thief who comes through the barricades that's what jesus said correct he comes through the door he communicates to them the sheep knows that the father's come my sheep listen to his voice and this is what he said abraham was a very old man and the lord blessed him in every way one day abraham said to his oldest servant a man in charge of his household take a oath putting your hand under my thigh okay this is a little ancient nowadays god promise god promise god promise that promises are there god is put your hand under the thigh it's an oath okay take an oath swear by the lord the god of heaven and the earth that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local canaanite women go instead to my homeland to my relatives and find a wife there for my son he was a father specific instructions very positively gave instructions is there any doubt in this instruction very clear father's instructions but the instruction that he gave to was a guardian and look at the guardian's response the guardian asked but what if i don't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from the home should i then take isaac there to live among your relatives in the land from come and the abraham said you know this word no in hebrews no that's what abraham said don't you can't you understand i'm a father can't you understand no my instruction is absolutely clear and he says abraham responded be careful never to take my son there for the lord the god of heaven who took me from my father's house and my native native home solemnly promised to give this land to his descendants he will send his angel ahead of you and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son if she is unwilling to come back with you then you are free from the oath of mine but under no circumstances will you take my son hallelujah what a father he is you know he's saying i have led the way with god i've been a father don't behave like a guardian my father's instruction is very clear the god i serve has led me i am confident of his faithfulness and have experience i am not proposing you various alternatives i am proposing to you i am leading you on one single track and he says don't ever make the mistake don't even propose of taking my son back because i am not a guardian i am a father to my son isaac hallelujah i want to ask you this question how many times when you had thoughts in your mind you went to people and they proposed various alternatives or did you get an example like abraham follow this and you will do well okay people call people call and often it's a time when you are discipled you know i used to think that i am a very very fantastic person but only when i sit before my spiritual father when i sit before my mentor my my reality of who i am is exposed and he looks eye to eye shoulder to shoulder and he's able to chop he's able to chop i remember one such father i had i had a man called pastor herbert herbert we both were blessed in our early years of marriage life and this man was like a father to me still a father to me he's in bangalore one fine day he'll be coming next year to preach to us but he's a man who has led me in a very amazing way young young married couple he would say one day morning he said he loved crabs you know what's crabs and he loved big crabs pastor herbert he loved and his wife looks ruth she's a fantastic cook i never like crabs ever till such time i never ate crabs but he likes big ones and one day we were chatting in that house in jamnagar as we were chatting he said you know ashok i want to tell you something about prayer and and i know prayer is like taking on something that you're scared of you don't like but taking on something and he said have you ever caught big crabs by your hand i said big crabs by hand not me he said let's go and one day he took me early morning my crabs to pick up crabs 
And as I went with him to the, pick up these big, big, huge crabs, he would explain to me, you know what? The crab looks big. But prayer is like knowing what to hold in the big thing. And if you get that right, you got it. You get that right, you got it. I remember that teaching that he imparted to me because he's the man who taught me to look at God's word in the eyes of prayer. Spiritual father. But there are many guardians who prayer karna hai, ha, one hour prayer karo. Ebi try karo. Ebi try karo. Obi try karo. But he led me by example. He led me like a father. And today when I look back at my prayer life, I look back at a spiritual father who came to me and taught me how to hold. And therefore, when I pray from then on, if people ask me, pray for my job, I ask them, what is the CTC you want? What is the location? Tell me that. People ask me, pray for my exams. Tell me what is the percentage you want me to pray for because I want to hold those tentacles correct and pray specifically. I don't want to say, Lord, bless him. No, 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 no. Tell me what is the percentage that you're asking me to pray. I will wrestle before God specifically for that. You getting what I'm trying to say? It came from a teaching that evolved from a spiritual father. I had many people who told me about prayer, but this spiritual father led me by example, by a crab example to understand. You getting what I'm trying to bring across? Father's lead and guardians. Can we repeat that? Father's lead. Okay, so the questions that you need to ask is, are you a father or are you a guardian? That's one thing you need to ask. Are you a father or are you a guardian? From the person that you're receiving, are you receiving like a, is he your father or is he like a guardian? If he's a guardian, leave because guardians, buy one, get thousand free. That's what Paul says. You'll have thousand guardians. But fathers are rare. Jesus wanted to do a three years ministry. Three years ministry. But he spent 18 years in the carpenter shop. How many years? 18 years. Under whom? Under his father. Jesus wanted a three years. So what is the ratio? One is to six. Three years ministry, 18 years in the corporate world or under a good father before you actually start flourishing to the full potential. And Jesus did a fantastic ministry in those three years because for 18 years, he was there under the carpenter's house. Have you got this point? Okay, it's an example of good marriage. A father will always advise you on the right track. Okay, it's always good. It's always good. It's always good. I remember I was doing my Naval Academy training and uh, I knew I had to get married to Sunni. It was engaged. Uh, we decided to get married and then I was trying to postpone. I said, training katam karenge. I'll enjoy my subleftenant's life. You know, it's a lovely, lavish life. You should enjoy. Young officer, passion ke saath. And I was just telling, talking to Stanley, and I said, Stan, can I postpone this marriage for another one year? I'm just becoming, I just finished my academy training and just got my stripes on, you know, looking handsome and trying to enjoy life. You getting what I'm trying to say? It's, it's a cool, cool life. It's nice, nice life because as a young lieutenant, as a young sub lieutenant, you enjoy, you've got a beautiful cabin in the ship, you've got a steward to serve you, and, and you know, everything is beautiful. Every guy saluting you, you know, kick milta you feel really, you know. And all that I wanted to do is to push. And I remember talking to him, and I said, Stan, can I do He said, nothing doing. Nothing doing. You will get married the first day you get commissioned. I got commissioned on 1st of July. <laughs> and, I got, and I got married 15 days before I got commissioned. <laughs> okay? He pushed us. But look, today when I look back at 17 years back down the line, no regrets. The wisest. Fathers lead. And many of my seniors said, Shadi ko push karo. Guardians propose but fathers lead okay he said nothing doing get married fathers are fathers second fathers wait patiently but guardians push guardians push okay you know what in the in the training in the i'm again going back to the training academy if they had waited patiently maybe 
many of the guys wouldn't have quit the Naval Academy. They would have continued to remain there. They would have continued to be at the NDA. They would have continued to hold on to the forts. Okay? But because they constantly push, they constantly push. And the push that comes from the guardian is a taunting push. Okay? But fathers wait patiently. They constantly wait. I've used the story of the prodigal son. While he was still long way off, long way off, while he was still long way off. The word long way off for a Jewish is double the size of the horizon. Double the size. In a, in a sense, in a sense, actually the father has not seen the son. He only got the feeling that the son has come. Long way off. Well beyond his horizon. He somehow felt the son is going to come back. Somehow felt the son is going to restore back. He's going to come back. Long way off, he saw his, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran towards his son, threw his arms around and kissed him. Okay? You saw that? I showed you the video of that. Long way off. The moment the father saw his son had a hamstring, he ran around, hugged him. And what were the guardians saying? You cannot enter the court. This is a holy ground. Rules don't permit. You can't break rules. But the father said, who cares about your rules? Who cares? I will go out for my son. I will reach out for my son. Okay? He long way off, the father went. And the father's job is to wait patiently. This is what Paul says. He says uh, in, in his epistles, he said that godly sorrow produces repentance. What does it produce? produces repentance. Not only it produces repentance, it produces repentance and leads that person to life. But worldly sorrow produces grief and produces death. Okay? So when you receive correction from your father, you need to understand whether it has produced godly sorrow. If it has produced godly sorrow, it is going to lead you to life. If it has produced grief and you constantly grumble about it, it will lead you to death. It will lead you to death. Because that is the job of a father. And a father patiently waits, patiently waits, patiently waits till they come to the place. And now I have seen, I have seen, I've got two children. I have patiently waited in prayer. Patiently waited in prayer. In fact, this year, me and Suni were just thankful to God because there were years of prayers that we did for both of them and we started seeing them unfold. And this, this, as we spend that time in prayer in our bedroom morning time, we just thank God because it amazes us because we patiently saw certain things culled out of their lives and brought life. Fathers patiently wait, but guardians push, push. Okay, when they push, the sons go away. Can sons go away. You remember the same story, the elder brother was a guardian. Correct? When the father patiently waited and the son restored, the prodigal son story is not about the younger son. It's about the eldest son. The whole story is about the eldest son. Because he was a guardian to what the father gave him. And when from the guardian, when the father took a lamb from the guardian, he felt hurt. He said, I guarded your property so long. I looked after it so well. I've been a good CEO. I've really been a good managing director. How dare you take out from this? Father said, I patiently waited for this son of mine who was lost has now come back. And you're worried about that one single sheep? You're worried about that one particular loss of property? I'm a father and you're a guardian. You getting what I'm trying to bring response? A father waits patiently to see things unfold. And that's important for us. Okay? If you are a father, if you have natural children and spiritual children, are you waiting patiently? Is a question that you need to ask. Are you waiting patiently? Wait patiently. Don't push people. Don't push people. Because when you push people, they withdraw, they disconnect, they disengage. But father's job is not to push, they can't. The guardians pushed in that video 
and many of them decided to leave but if they were fathers they would have stood with them helped them to understand the heart of god agreed third fathers fathers lean on god and guardians on wisdom okay fathers lean on god and guardians often depend upon wisdom then god said take your son your only son whom you love Isaac and go to the region of Moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you early the next morning Abraham got up loaded his donkey took it with him his two servants and his son Isaac when he cut the wood for the burnt offering he set them on the place and God had told him about on the third day Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance he said to his servant stay here with the donkey while I go while I and the boy go over there we will worship and then we will come back we will worship and then we will come back to you Okay Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and placed it on the son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went together Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham Abraham father yes my son Abraham replied the fire and the wood are here Isaac asked but there is a lamb where is the lamb for the burnt offering Abraham answered God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son and the two of them went on together you know what it's a beautiful relationship i like this story you know when did isaac asked isaac wasn't isaac wasn't a small kid when abraham took him he was well in his teens he has very high level of intelligence he was very well and you know when did he ask his father he has already he was lying on the wood on the pile of wood everything was prepared and he's put and then he's sleeping on that wood which is likely to be lighted and asking dad i can see the wood I can see the fire but where is the offering correct where is the offering where is the offering because we we sometimes have this thing can you get this but why should i correct no why are you telling me you have this problem with it. if you are a sister or a sibling many times you felt if you have four or five sisters why mama always me here is isaac on the sacrifice table lying down sleeping confidently and asking dad i can see the wood i can see the fire where is the offering and you know what that's the assurance isaac had in the father and you know what did the father tell the servants you stay here i will go with isaac we will do the worship we will come back what did he say we will come back but what did abraham heard god we or i he only heard god i because god told him offer isaac on the sacrifice how could it be we but what did he tell the servants we will come back his confidence is not on himself his confidence was always on the god you know i tell this to my children they come and they say dad this 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 but that this i said you know what listen to me even if i'm wrong the god i serve will somehow turn it around he will do it for your good even if i'm wrong because my heart and my confidence is not on my experience it's the god i serve hallelujah and here is what abraham is telling isaac the lord will provide my confidence is not in answering you the lord will provide he told his servants i am taking my son i will come back though in theory god told me to offer isaac fathers always lean on god they lean on god guardians go away by experience you saw that video that guy has been experienced dumping people into the water and he knows kitna pani peene ke baad usko nikalna he goes by experience but fathers depend upon the father heart of god that is important everything that a father does is leaned on the bosom of the heart of god and god loves it god loves it there are many times i've counseled people i've advised people and i've said you know what do this even if i'm wrong my god will make it and they've come back to me and they said you know what you have told us amazing it sounded foolish for me at that time but just because i obeyed i see a blessing 
in the years down the line. And I tell them, just do it. Because my confidence is not on my experience. It's on the heart of God. Like the way Abraham depended. And fathers are those who lean on God. Not on the degrees. Not on their experience. And fathers are those who depend. A story is told of a son who loved a sports car. And he was a son of, the son of a billionaire. He had a father had a lot of wealth. He could afford the sports car. And every time they would drive down to the college, father and son, the son would express his desire to have the sports car. And finally, the graduation ceremony is over. And he was ex expecting his dad to buy the sports car because dad had all the money. He's a billionaire's son. And lo and behold, in the graduation ceremony, the father gave him a brand new Bible. The son was so upset. So upset. That instead of a sports car, he got a Bible. He refused to take the Bible. And that was the last day he corresponded with his father. Disengaged with his father. He was so hurt. Eventually, he became successful as a son. And he went on doing his business extremely well. One fine day, he got the news that his dad is no more. So he went to visit his dad. Uh, went, to, went, went to attend the funeral. And soon after the funeral was over, he came back and started taking charge of all the father's properties and assets. And as he was taking charge of various assets that belonged to the father, was, was this clean, brand new Bible that the father had bought for him. And he opened the Bible, which he refused to use. And out of the Bible fell a key with a tag, which had the address of the sports car. And behind the tag was written, paid in full, go and collect it. You getting what I'm trying to say? The fathers camouflage everything under the umbrella of the word of God. Okay, he wanted to give him the sports car, but he wanted it to know that it comes in the package of the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. The Bible is the key route for success. Okay, fathers depend on, on, fathers, uh, on God and guardians depend on wisdom. Okay, therefore Paul was right. You have 10,000 guides. Okay, but very few fathers. Okay, agreed? Can we all read this? Fathers lean. Fourth difference between the fathers. Fathers persevere, whereas guardians expect. Fathers persevere and guardians expect. Okay. There are a couple of people that I've worked with and some of them I constantly persevere. Constantly persevere. Constantly persevere. Okay, constantly persevere. And sometimes it comes within me. Should I or shouldn't I? And I go back to God and God says persevere. Hang on. Don't give up. Encourage. Edify. Communicate to them. Be in touch with them. and Talk to them. Okay? But guardians expect. I told you now once that is enough. Come now. If you don't want to come, get lost. But fathers constantly persevere. They are constantly following up. They're constantly seeking, constantly asking, constantly checking up. What next? What next? What next? Okay? My little children for whom I have again in anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed. This is what Paul is writing to the city. He says, you know what? I am, in, I am having birth pains. Why am I having birth pains? I am in constant anguish. Constant anguish. Because the birth pains are so much painful for me. So much painful for me. Why? Why does Paul say that? I want to see Christ born in you. Hallelujah. I am in pains for Christ to be born in you. A couple of years back, there was a movie in, in Telugu. Okay? I don't know whether you know that name. You may not have known. In that movie, they decided to show that uh, they wanted to change the uh, sequence, what would the world look like? Suppose the woman bears a child and the pains come to the husband. So in that movie they have shown, and it's called Jambalakada, some, some name, okay, anyway, whatever name it is. But that movie is like that. It shows that movie as to how if the wife carries full nine-month baby, but the pains come to the, to the husband. And therefore, there's a, in that, there's a scene, she's full pregnant, and she's about to be taken for because the pains have started for the husband is screaming. And as she's going, she's saying, get me one thumbs up. Get me one. She's ordering her food pack. Because the guy, other way, is screaming. Ah, ooh. 
Okay, and here is Paul saying, I am in pains. I am in pains for you. Why? So that Christ is formed in you. Fathers persevere. Fathers persevere. Fathers endure. Fathers are constantly. I remember we went, uh, Suni was in the maternity ward for Mahima. And I was standing outside the maternity ward. One lady, fully pregnant, was taken for delivery. IV was put. She took the IV. She took everything and walked out. Meriko delivery nahi karna hai. And the two nurses are coming behind her. The noise is too much. I don't want to deliver. But Paul says, I am persevering. I am persevering. But there are women on that bed. Oh, ooh, you know, it's a very horrifying ward. If you don't know that, <laughs> petrified. Every scream that comes out of that paternity ward, as fathers outside, we think it is our child. And we are standing there, and the nurse comes with that. <laughs> they are very rude. Outside, you know, you feel like, yeah, why on earth? Like a prisoner in every number that comes. Bataiga tum kitne bar aata hai, she tells in, 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 in Marathi, you know. It's so horrifying. But what I want to bring across is fathers persevere to see the birth of Christ in you. Okay, as a father, you need to see Christ is born in your natural and spiritual children. Persevere. Raising up children is not an easy task. If somebody has told you it is easy, then you're mistaken. It is not easy. Very difficult. But fathers continue to persevere. Speak to them, encourage them. And that's what Paul says. Lastly, fathers lay foundations. Guardians expect castles. They expect castles. Okay? They've only invested five minutes of time in maths with their children, but they want 100 out of 100. Punch minute the years ago. Do this, do this. One problem only he told him, that's all. But the results he wants? Are, I told you one, but he said, Dad, you only told me one problem. No. Okay? Fathers lay foundations. And guardians expect castles. Very important. You know what? Fathers invest into something that you know. How many of you have gone and seen the foundations of your house? Can you see it? You can't see. You can't see. I remember we constructed a house in Kodai. And the guy who did the foundations for us did not complete the build. He didn't do the construction on top. But the builder, the contractor who did it, he would out, his name is George. He would say, sir, you know what? The most important thing for me is to lay the foundations right. You may not see it. There's a lot of hard work. He gave me his bill of bill for that foundation. I said, where is the foundation? I can't see it. But he says, you don't know, sir. It's gone down. Fathers do a considerable amount of work that goes invisible. Invisible. Okay? But a guardian expects castles. You know what? In the training, we do. Are you not able to stop in the water? Guardian. Can't you endure? Remain there. Guardian. But fathers prepare the foundations. They're constantly working to ensure that your foundation is well built. And Paul uses this. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skill master builder, I have laid the foundation. I have laid the foundation. If the foundation is right, you're free to build the way you want to build your life. That's what we do, foundation course. My job is to lay the foundations. My job is to tell you where there is life. My job is to tell you, come to church. Because in the assembly of God's people, you are blessed. You heard that video? We continue to pray. We continue to seek. There's never a day that has not passed by that I have not called out the names of the people in, the, in this church before the Lord. When you don't have a job, the father feels as if he doesn't have a job. If you don't have a finances, the father feels as if you don't have finances. Your problems become the father's problems. And he constantly perseveres, continuously battles. As a father, you have to remain. There are days when my son's, son and my daughter has been unwell and I have stood awake the night through the watches because his pain is my pain. In the early years, Anugrah would suffer from bronchial asthma and we would have to rush him through the hospital and they would put nebulization. But we would weep and cry because it's the time for us to stand and endure. 
we build the foundations but the experts guardians expect castles fathers don't expect castles therefore we as a family are okay you can come make the announcements do everything in this church if there are mistakes no problem because nobody is expecting castles out of you we expect people to function because this is you saw the sunday school children read out one fine day they will be excellent orators if you don't know mark my words 10 15 years down the line they will be head and shoulder above the people in their school you know why because they picked up the mic at this age there are people who are my colleagues stand before the mic and tremble tremble i have got senior people in my organization they can't address crowds i am sure each one of them who mumble the foundations of the word of god will stand one day before crowds and confidently speak you know why because their fathers have laid the foundations for them if not i have seen in my 26 years my sunday school teachers my sunday school students today lead churches head organizations you know why because their fathers laid the right foundation okay as i conclude this is what paul says i appeal to you for my child onesimus whose father i become in my imprisonment formerly he was useless to you now he is indeed useful to you and to me i am sending him back to you my very heart what a powerful statement you know what you had onesimus he was a slave he was useless i agree he had a lot of but now i become a father to him and because of my fatherhood relationship he is useful to you and useful to me take him back you know previously he was a slave but now he's a son and because he's a son take him back paul writes to you know writes back to philemon and he says take him back take him back because he's my very heart i want to ask you this morning are you a father are you a guardian are you a father are you a guardian fathers take most difficult decisions in the old testament if my son is rebellious he doesn't listen to me i am supposed to take him as a father to the city towers to the city gates and call the elders of the city and say that my son has been rebellious he doesn't deserve to remain in the community and the bible says the elders stone him to death that's the father this stone him and paul says that in the new testament put this guy out of the church and he says hand him over to satan from the church don't put him in the church and that's what he tells timothy that's what he tells the people if he is misbehaving take him hand him over to satan let satan handle him but don't pollute the community of god our fathers protect his house protect his family protect his church amen let's close in prayer father we thank you this morning we thank you because it's a privilege to have a father in our lives you are our eternal father but i pray that we would be fathers to our natural and spiritual children that lord we will hold the grounds of difficulty we will persevere we will lean on your wisdom we will lean lord on the guidance that comes from the holy spirit we will be people who will rebuke who will correct but never give up on the people we will wait patiently for our prodigals to return back we will have the heart of the father i pray this morning that as we heard this word minister to us touch us and may we be people who will impact and change the way people let us not be in the list of guardians and guides but let us be known among the people that we are fathers in jesus name we pray amen